In this episode of Mind Pump, the world's top fitness, health, entertainment, and comedy podcast, what? we answer fitness and health questions that are asked by some of our listeners, but the way we open the episode is with an introductory portion. Uh, today's episode has a 38-minute intro where we talk about current events, we talk about ourselves, we mention our sponsors. Um, so let me give you the breakdown of this whole episode. We start out by talking about my hair. It got cut finally. Ooh, it took a long time. So handsome. Then we talked about kids' games that we played when we were kids that kids today would never dream of playing. Mm -hmm. uh, then Justin talked about the weird place he got a mosquito bite. I feel really bad for that mosquito. <laughs> I can't believe I admitted this. Uh, then he taught us about something that happened in the 19th century called Shanghai. Uh, kind of crazy. Yeah, look into it. We talk about GNC permanently closing down something like 1,200 stores and going bankrupt. That's kind of crazy. Then I brought up some of my old sales awards from back in the day when I would work at the 24-Hour Fitness uh, Clubs. Hmm. Then we talked about the trap bar and the value that we find in trap bar lifting. Uh, then we talk about some supplements from our favorite company, uh, Organifi. Now, Organifi makes organic uh, products like protein powders that are vegan, green juices and gold juices. They also bundle them together where they combine different products for different goals. Now, because you listen to Mind Pump, you actually get a discount on all of their organic products. Just go to Organifi.com. That's O-R-G-A-N-I-F-I.com forward slash Mind Pump, uh, and then use the code Mind Pump to get 20% off. And that uh, led us to talk about the workout bundles that we offer. Now, right now, we have the biggest sale of the year. It's our summer sale. Every single workout program that we have, every single one, is 40% off. 40, 40. That's a huge discount. 40. All of our bundles are an additional 25% off. So bundles are where we combine two or more workout programs together for specific goals. For like, let's say if you're over 40 or if your goal is to look good in a bikini, so focus on the bikini muscles, or if you're somebody that's a hard gainer. We have all kinds of different bundles. Those are normally 30 to 35% off. You can add an additional 25% off with the summer sale. Uh, here's how you get those two discounts. Go to mapsfitnessproducts.com. If you want to get 40% off individual programs, use the code SUMMERPROGRAM. If you want to get the additional 25% off all the bundles, use the code Summer Bundle. Uh, then we got into answering the questions. Here's the first one. The person says, uh, should I hire a personal trainer or a nutritionist first? Which one should I start with? Next question, what are your best tips for motivating clients to keep them coming even after the initial excitement wears off? The next question, this person wants to know what our opinion is on the sun. We think it's vital to life. Uh, and the final <laughs> We're question. We're for it. Yeah. We like the sun. Yeah, we like you, son. And the final question, this person says, how do you deal with someone that's really, really harsh on themselves? Um, also, um, in addition to the summer sale, MAPS hit is an additional 10% off uh, with the code uh, HIT50, H-I-I-T-5-0. But again, those other, bun those other codes for the big summer sale are summer program, that's 40% off all programs, or summer bundle for an additional 25% off all programs. And you can find all of this at mapsfitnessproducts.com. It's a bundle of love. Do you know how uh, how much faster I feel right now? Do you uh, know how good your hair looks today? Just fast. Does it tell yeah. Justin? Tell He's him. He's like that. athletic. Also. Now, okay. Don't you know, go that's that all far. you needed. Hey, you, went, you went too far. Be, <laughs> hey, hey. <laughs> I mean, you said you're fast, so. Be, I, for me. Be yeah, honest yeah, right see. now. Okay. Do you feel like you can even tell the difference between a the, a, a stylist cutting your hair versus? Yeah, of a, course. Okay. Of course, I could tell the difference. Wow. It's way more expensive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my, your wallet's no. A lot was, no, of course, of course. There's a big difference, you know, between uh, someone who's a stylist and someone who works. At I mean, personally, I think this is the most handsome I've ever seen you. No. Yes. It's, it's really. Pretty, it's pretty yeah. close. That's it, really handsome. It yeah. is because yeah. you've seen me look pretty good. Yeah. In the yeah. Past. Yeah. But you look good, right dude. Now. My hair was. It was out of control. Yeah. It was nuts. I'm trying I, to get I feel my, myself doing this already. Just I'm trying to tell me more. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. You know what I mean? I just can't help it. Shut up. Yeah. I'm trying to get my son to get a haircut. He looks terrible right now. He's got so much hair because at least my <laughs> like hair, wolf man. At least my hair is not as thick. When I was a kid, my hair was yeah, so thick, dude. Mine that poofy, right? Oh, bro, it was terrible. Yeah. yeah, that's my son. So right now, he literally looks like I told him. I said, if I left you outside. Someone would probably give you food or something because they think you're home. 
He just hair is just all over the place. Yeah. You know? Does he not want to get one or he what? He doesn't care, dude. He don't care. No, man, he doesn't care. Even though even though I think he's talking to the girls. Now were you I was gonna say what's happening with that? I know, you were know you, what I mean? Are you yeah. were you like that at his age? Did you not care? Like would you ah whatever? I um I did I, I was into girls pretty young. I'm trying to think when I started to try to look different for girls. It was right around I'd say right around his age, but the way I tried to look different was lift weights. I don't really care about my hair. You know yeah, I was gonna mean? say, did you like? Mm. Did you take time picking an outfit out before school? Did you do your hair? No, like- that wasn't you. <laughs> <laughs> you did that. You know, you did that of the course night I, before. Of course, I did. You planned it the day before. Maybe, <laughs> maybe, <laughs> yeah, maybe sometime. Maybe yeah. sometimes. You totally did. Okay. It was like laid out, like somewhere on a chair, like and you're probably standing oh, yeah. back, looking at the shoes, and like, oh. I 100 percent in high school. If I had, if there, like, let's say, there, out your let's say, let's say there was like a. Uh, uh, like a group project, <laughs> right? A group project in class, like biology or something. Yeah. And, you know, the hot chick that I had a crush on was going to be in my group. 100%, bro. I, oh, yeah. I, I fucking thought about my outfit. Did you? 100%. Oh, that was me in math class. For sure, yeah. Right next Maybe to the Maybe not like a normal day, like a normal day going to school. Like I could I could pick my outfit out the, yeah. the morning of. But if I was going to see like a girl or be a part. Like, yeah, you got to be sharp. You got to yeah. be on point. Yeah, the best. I was like that My too, best right? outfit's coming out, dude. I'd even ask my mom to wash. Like, if my clothes were dirty, the my favorite pair of jeans or something, yeah. like I loved. I was like, oh, you got to wash this for me. For the tomorrow. shoes and the hat, you know, everything matched. Yeah. See, I I went this far. If I thought if I got a compliment on something, I wore it all the time. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh yeah, these these are the jeans. Oh, that, more of this? No problem. Yeah, one, so, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I could do yeah, that. Yeah. Mom, yeah, yeah. can we buy four pairs of these exact jeans? <laughs> Not much has changed. Yeah, <laughs> Stacy likes. It. I looked. I, I there was some. My, so my mom's got old uh, photo albums, and it, not that long ago, I looked through some of them to see. God, God the style was in the in the mid nineties. Wow. Yeah. Oh yeah. What was, it was going special, on? Wasn't it, dude? I had the my, you know the jeans that were just huge. Janko. You were all jankoed out. That's great. Yeah, like huge, and you it, you covers your foot. Yeah. You can't even see your I shoes. Had, I, I wore real baggy pants. Yeah. Yeah. You like don't wear those. They were kind of kind of would sag just enough. You know, mm, that's yeah. right. That was a thing too, yeah. sagging a little bit. So you'd almost go butt crack. But one uh, one piece of style has been consistent f- with me forever. Hmm. That's the undershirt, <laughs> the beater. Oh uh, yeah, <laughs> I've had that for uh, since I was. I can't remember. Th- that's part of your skin. It's, I mean, <laughs> let's be honest. <laughs> my, <laughs> my son teases me about it. Yeah, he's like, "Why do you wear that? It's hot outside. Why do you have it one underneath?" <laughs> hey, it's bad when your kids busting your balls, dude. <laughs> no, no, no. He, he'll he'll get it one day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. One day he'll put it on and be like, "Oh wait." You're like, "Ooh, I look bigger." I like it's this. like a hug constantly. <laughs> yeah, because my kids also make fun of my underwear, you know, because I wear the Italian, you know, the the, the brief, the not briefs, they're like bikini yeah. underwear. And my son's like, "Why do you wear that?" Like, <laughs> try them on one time, you'll see. <laughs> yeah, you'll, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah, I'm surprised you don't go full speedo you know for there, pool time there's oh to go swimming yeah no i won't do that courtney's dad used to do that did he really oh, oh God. are you serious the family revolted they were like <laughs> no okay way. no you can't do this anymore see i would totally do and that i was like, like on thank a you trip, guys on like a vacation trip with like katrina like in fiji where we're on like a like an island together or some just shit to, just to attract the other swingers and no just <laughs> So I get I get tan yeah. right, bro. Because so that's what'll yeah. happen. Yeah. That's what'll happen uh, if you go out in the speedos, bro. But I would not hey, do that hey. at a family barbecue. I would not come yeah. out in my. You get the middle aged couple. All the gold chains coming over. Hey, hello. What's happening over here? <laughs> hey, can I get yeah. the middle aged? Can I buy you a drink? You yeah. guys going to a disco? Eh? <laughs> yeah. Hey, what's happening? Your wife is beautiful, right? Yeah. yeah. Anyway, you guys want to come hang out afterwards? That's right. Yeah. <laughs> have you ever? Have you guys had that happen to you at a, at a resort? I've, we've had that happen. Uh, I mean, subtle. It wasn't as obvious as, as yours, but oh. we had people that hung out with us for way too long. We had to break off. Oh, dude. Yeah, Jessica and I a couple times yeah. at a resort. And, you know, you never know for sure unless they tell you mm-hmm. what's going on. But, you know, afterwards we got back to the room and we were a little bit like, I think they were trying to yeah. hit on us. Right. You know what I mean? <laughs> and you know how you can tell? They, they, it's the, it's the woman of the couple. That's the one that's the, of course, she's the, guy, the hunter. That's the bait. The guy can't do it. Too. No, cause yeah. he's creepy. You're right. Yeah. Right. But the girl, and then she'll flirt with the, with your girl. Isn't that unfair how that is? Think about that for a second. Of like, course. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like if the guy comes over. Yeah, you get five drinks in right, like, if a guy a If a guy comes over and hits on another man's wife, yeah. like libel shit's going to go down yeah. like bad. You know what I'm saying? Or Dude, that good. happened at my high school reunion. This, this girl just like was kept talking to Courtney and we were like, oh, I'm great. She's hitting it off with somebody, talking to somebody. And then she kept like, wow, you look really good. 
like really good. Like, your hair is <laughs> amazing. And she started like touching her. And, no. like, and then Courtney looks at me like, wait a minute. Like, <laughs> this is getting different. You know? <laughs> like, and she likes you. <laughs> Just you know, it's like, funny too. The wives, this is great to watch. Hey, the wives at first, they enjoy it. Like, I really like yeah. Susan. She's yes. like oh. so friendly. And then oh. friendly turns into like yeah. touchy feely. You know what yeah. And then it's like, I'm not sure about Susan She's anymore. Like, it's super sneaky. Like, where sneaky. do you go shopping? They send where the lady. They send the lady to hit on the lady because yeah. nobody's going to stop that. And then she, you're right. She gets like, oh, Oh, she's so nice. She's yeah, she likes nice. her. She likes her the first day, and then uh, day two, she comes in a little bit closer. Oh, man, so <laughs> yeah, funny. dude, I Good ate times. one of those uh, those uh, acai bowls this morning. Do you know how many calories those things have? A lot. <sighs> yeah, I avoid those for Bro, that reason. I was. I went to whole. <laughs> why do you avoid them, Justin? <laughs> Shut up. If it was a cheese bowl, you would. Because it's all <laughs> fucking sugar. That's why. <laughs> this guy actually is uh, counting calories. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, uh, that's yeah. laughing give, me all, give me all the fat and protein. I'm trying to watch my figure yeah. right yeah. now. Uh, I don't eat yeah. those. are too high yeah. calorie. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll eat a block of cheese. <laughs> D- yeah. Dipping cheese. You know, I'm, I'm, his- I'm on the all gum diet right now. <laughs> it's chicharronis <laughs> and cheese, you know. <laughs> no, um, it, it's like this big, right? It's not even that big. And it's got 30 grams of protein in it. So that's why I got it. Because this morning, yeah. we 900 grams didn't of have, carbs. No, it's, it's 1,100 calorie bowl. Yeah, they're high. And it's uh, 99% yeah. sugar. For yeah, sure, yeah. So I feel a little. Well, how weird. did it taste? It was, it was sweet. Yeah, yeah. So I feel a little bit, a little weird at the moment. Hey, people were calling me out about my banana exaggeration the other day. Did you see that? Oh no, I didn't see that. <laughs> yeah, that's just because I said fifty grams of sugar. It was probably more like thirty-two, mm. uh, but still, it's a lot, right? So that was. I think my my point was that the bananas are a lot higher than what people think they were. But someone's like, you know how big of a banana that have to be, bro, to have like fifty. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of bananas you working yeah, with those? It's, there, it's been a while since I've thrown one on a scale, but my point is, it's a lot fucking. <laughs> More than what the books are telling you. <laughs> Adam, Adam yeah. likes the big bananas. Oh yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. I, I was. I want to tell you guys this. So uh, I didn't realize just how different the games that kids play in school or what the friends are from when we were younger. Um, I mean, I, I know that dodgeball has kind of been banned and that kind of stuff. But do you guys remember the game Butts Up? Hundred oh, percent. How did you play that? I do remember that. What's yeah. So we played me? it with like a tennis ball. Yes. Against yeah, like a backboard, and then uh-huh. if you lost, you had to go stand up. Like <laughs> basically, like you're you're under arrest, but your hands are on the the backboard. And they and throw, then it, you at your throw ass. it at your ass. Throw it at your ass as hard as, as they can. can. Yeah. Except you found a hack, so you'd throw it and you'd bounce it under their legs. <laughs> yes. It bounce off and it hit him right in the nuts. Oh my <laughs> yeah. god. That was my hack. That I don't remember yeah. that. Oh yeah, that was that, the best. So I went I went for a walk with the kids and we walked to this elementary school and they had a big backboard and it was a school that I went to and I'm like oh wow I'm like I used to we used to play a game here called butts up so I'm explaining to my kids (laughs) and the look of horror on my daughter's face she's like so if you miss the ball then then they get to throw the ball at you as hard as they want that's mean and I'm like yeah yeah it's really fun and she goes <laughs> yeah. what if they hit you in the head I'm like well I mean then you know yeah, they happens. hit you anywhere then they're that's what happens but you're trying to hit them in the butt and she's like well, why would you guys play that I'm like it's fun she's like, <laughs> that's not fun so that went made me go down uh, a rabbit hole of stuff we used to do yeah did you guys ever play the game I, I'm, I don't know if you guys play this we called it baby bridges you guys ever play this? I never played that. Okay, one. I, I that guarantee. Sounds familiar too. I guarantee you've played a version of this. Yeah, yeah. Tell me how it goes. So you and your buddies. So baby bridges. It, the game works like this: if you say any word, oh yeah, that okay. starts with the letter B, your friends could beat the shit out of you until you said Same. the word yes. baby bridges. Yes, I remember. Do you remember this? Oh, yes, I do wow. remember this. So you're, you're a slug bug. Yeah. Oh, when you see it. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, so this you one. You just punch your friend if you saw like a VW dude, bug. All the games were like this when we were kids. Just punch them. But so, it, it ran like all day long. So it'd yeah, be yeah. at school, in class. The whole year. Yeah, if you said a, a word would be, you had to get it. You had to say that baby britches real quick before someone came over. Or you got pummeled. Yeah. And the game. I can't believe we didn't adopt that. Yeah. And the game never <laughs> ended. It was all year long. Usually this would happen. You'd start it. Yeah. And it's like no one's going to end it. Yeah. And you would literally. I mean, there were a couple times when either me or one of my friends said a word with a start with a B, didn't realize it, and three dudes caught it and just coo, 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 before the guy could say baby. Oh my so God. you would just get blasted. What's Dude. this one? Remember this? What's what's this one? Oh, oh you gotta yeah. you, if you look at it. Yeah, yeah. yeah what's yeah, the name of it? If you stick your finger in it though before well, what do you have to do? Like you uh, yeah, you cover your eyes or I don't no, know. No, no, if it? I get you to look at the get the hole, you look get the, you get socked from me. But yeah. if I stick my finger you in st- it, yeah, you you, stick your finger if in you it. stick your finger in it, then you get to pummel me from it. Uh that was a dumb I don't remember the name of that though. Neither do I. I don't remember that. What was all these games about beating each other up? It's just a way to all gone now. Get out weird aggression. Yeah. All yeah. gone. Yeah. Explains yeah. why that generation is so soft. Of course 100%. these kids. Of Dude. course these kids are crazy now. They need to, they need something. 
You know, you guys have a reason to hit each other. <laughs> Red Rover. You guys remember Red Rover? We played it on asphalt. Yeah, dude. Like, like ever, like you would make sure you clothesline somebody as hard as you could, and then they would like flip over you and like fall smack, like right on asphalt. Yeah. And, like, like, so what? So okay, you you went down this rabbit hole of like all the games we played. What do they play now? It's Foursquare. That's that's, <laughs> that's, that's that's it, dude. That's it. <laughs> they don't play nothing. Which we played that too. They don't even play. They play. Bro, they make up stuff. It's like my kids play like cougar, and I'm like, what's cougar? Uh, I, I know. I played that in my twenties. Search it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's a different kind Chase of game. Chase the cougar. Yeah. yeah. No. no, that's not how you play, Dad. No, there were games that I can't even repeat the names of the games on yeah. this podcast because they're so offensive. Yeah. The oh. names of the games themselves the ones where you just rhyme things together <laughs> you know yeah, exactly yeah, what i'm yeah, talking about yeah, you tackle people that, and it's offensive that was the name of the yeah. game yeah and it was what you play it was so terrible yeah you know it was so terrible was it though um co- today's context like yeah. if you can comp- if you judge the past by today's context a lot of stuff mm-hmm. you know what i mean there's a lot of stuff that was terrible yeah. and that would have been just you know one of the worst things anyway. what, what's the worst place you guys have had a, a mosquito bite mm. <laughs> what, what, I just, oh, I'm hey, just curious. The knuckle, the knuckle is oh, the word. I hate that. That when you get them on right, right on the like your finger, your index finger, and they get right on the knuckle right there, and it just drives you crazy. That's a bad one. I had a mosquito bite uh, near my butt crack. I was uh, sleeping what? in the yeah, sleeping in the nude. Okay. And uh, you know how shitty it is to have a mosquito bite n- on your basically in your butt crack. Yeah, because you're that's scratching why I bring that it all up. day. All yeah. Right. yeah. What happened? My, here? Mine's like on my cheek, and then there's one like in. In the cheeks. What were you doing? <laughs> I wasn't doing anything. Yeah, <laughs> hiking in the nude <laughs> near your house? Well, we were playing. Uh, I know I was outside. The, the The mosquitoes are crazy right now. And we were like playing um, frisbee golf. And I figured like, I, I don't know. I must have got bit uh, while I was out there. But I've just, I started scratching. And, and I thought, I was like, oh man, you know, what, what's going on there? Like I have to wipe or something. <laughs> like <we're, it's laughs> A mosquito bite, dude. <laughs> That's what and it made it even <laughs> worse. He's like racking his brain. He's going, wait a second. Did I not get? Did a, I not? Did I only do? Did I, did I only do two front to you back? Know, sometimes it's so itchy. He's like re- recounting his last bathroom you know I mean? break. Yeah. I don't always have wipes, dude. The, the wet wipes. You know, like, he doesn't get all. Oh god! No, yeah, Justin eats. You know, if I don't clean it fully, I'm just saying. I'm just gonna, saying. It was, it was an unwelcome surprise. <laughs> And, well, uh, wait a second. I'm still though. paying for I don't it. Understand. How, I, I, yeah, how does a mosquito get in your I ass? Don't know. I don't <laughs> It's a freaking mosquito. <laughs> no, I, I can't explain it. You got big cheeks, though. There's a lot of crack to get through. There is. It, it, it went in. <laughs> you imagine the poor mosquito it got stuck <laughs> in this? It must have been mid step. It was a horny mosquito. You know, I don't know what was the, happening. The cheek spread for a split second. This mosquito got stuck in there, and he's like, fuck. <laughs> yeah. I, I, was, yeah, I ain't I, going out like this. I'm upset about <laughs> it. What do I do? <laughs> <laughs> I have a. It's a, so uncomfortable. I can't like. I sit and I'm like. Ugh. So my kid, oh boy, he's gonna hate me for telling the story. But when he was younger, he was in in Italy, and they have like ants over there that bite. You know, they'll actually bite you or whatever. And he, one got in his bathing suit and bit him on his piece. Oof. Yeah, dude. Oof. He was oh. in the shower and you heard ah, you know, and he comes oh. out. And he's, oh. I'm like, what happened? He goes, there was an ant, yeah. and I think it bit my it bit me here. Yeah, yeah. That was that was. I had the leech thing, like stand by me. I had that one time. What? Wow. We were in Utah, and we went in this. You lake. had a leech on your on yeah, your on junk? my piece. Yeah. yeah. What? And it was already like, like <laughs> going for it. What? Oh, it and it freaked me. I felt like so like oh my god, what's gonna happen to me? <laughs> you know, like I didn't know, uh, you know what if they were like did you gain like superpowers? Yeah, or yeah, like maybe <laughs> leech man. <laughs> <laughs> the power to suck. Hey, if yeah. you think about it, that's the best place for a leech to go. It's very vascular. You know, mm. the leech was probably. Dude, nothing freaked me out more than that. That was the worst. Dude. Yeah, yeah, of course that has got to be the worst. There's a, there's this. Uh, I don't know where. I want to say. I, I want to say. What's that? Uh, the the Nile, right? What's that? That river. Uh, yeah, you go. <laughs> And um, <laughs> yeah. I don't know what happened. In Egypt? That's what happens when you have 200 grams of sugar for breakfast. Your brain doesn't work. Yeah. But anyway, um, there's this fish that apparently, it's a fish or parasitic type fish that if you, it, it'll swim up your, or try and burrow yes. up your pee hole. Yeah. In your, in your, in your way. I've heard about that, especially if, if you pee in the water. It's definitely attractive. Yeah. And it goes up 
your yeah. pee hole, dude. I mean, how small of a fish that we're talking? It has to be like the smallest of small fish to well, try that. Well, I mean, you know, we don't need to talk about how small or just <laughs> your wig is, but burrows its way in there. You know? Well, I, I definitely don't have a massive pee hole. <laughs> <laughs> you don't, you don't do sounding? Like gar- <laughs> yeah. Garden hose. Remember when we looked that up? Yeah. Yeah, so apparently yeah. it goes up there, and then how do you get that out? Uh, yeah, exactly. That's terrible. Yeah. Yeah, things that attack. Uh, That's scary. Those parts of us, Doug, are you bringing it up? It's the penis fish. Urethra fish. Urethra. It's called the kendiru, sometimes known as the penis fish, a small Amazonian catfish. It's reported to lodge itself Ooh. in the urethra of people who may be urinating in the water. I there feel like this is. is hey, I feel like this is one of those wise tales like your parents used to tell you don't be don't, in the pool. That's what I think too. <laughs> that's why it's that's, that's like this situation. Yeah. Like the they're or environmentalists real. over yeah. there are like, stop pissing in the river. We're yeah. trying to keep it yeah. clean. There's yeah. a fish that's gonna swim up yeah. your dick. Yeah. That, that'd be the ultimate lesson you teach everybody, you know, at the community pool. <laughs> is it yeah. true? Throw some of those in there. Is it true, Doug? It says it's uh, there's very limited credible evidence in medical literature about this happening. Yeah, oh, it's uh, so I think uh, urban it's, myth, bro. Just uh, get you. Just, there's someone's trying to get you to stop peeing in the Nile River. Say, Damn cause, it! Because you know how catfish have like the razor, Amazon too, razor sharp oh, gills. Mm. Oh, imagine trying to pull that back out. You can't. <laughs> you got to go all the way through to yeah. the other end. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> no, just kidding. <laughs> yeah, when I was a kid, I did think that for sure. I did believe the wives' tale that if you peed in the pool, so that it would change color. Yeah. yeah. So I never peed in the pool. I Ever. But I know a lot of kids did. Yeah, uh. I do. I see you guys not not. I have another <laughs> urban <defending> yourself. <laughs> uh, <laughs> legend. I did, myth. but I just really want yeah. to test it out. That's what yeah. that was about. There, have you guys ever heard of the term being Shanghaied? No, <laughs> no, I haven't. Yeah, so I don't know. I was I was watching a show. I think it was like uh, uh, Explore something, whatever, with Josh Gates, and they were talking about like this legend back in like the early nineteen nineteenth century, where uh, in Portland. They actually had all these different tunnels, like in systems underneath these businesses, uh, and bars specifically, where they would take like uh, people that got like drunk, and they would actually like uh, as they were passed out, they would like kidnap them and bring them on a boat, and they'd wake up and they find out, oh no, I'm on a fishing boat, and then you know basically they have to do work, and they'd just like basically just take these guys out from, you know, from the city. And this was like a racket they were running of like, what? Like 1500, like people, I guess a, a year they would take and they would, they would like kidnap and bring on the boats to work for them. They would literally kidnap. And then they, when they drop them back off, what do they do with them afterwards? Yeah, I don't know. That's, oh. that's a good question. But, uh, <laughs> like they, nobody, they're, they're fucked because they're on a boat. They have to. <laughs> well, I mean, but when they get back, they didn't tell everybody, hey, look out, there's people kidnapping. I know, right? <laughs> yeah. Or do they just let them, they sink them out there? Just, that's, I mean, that's And that's a good true question. story? Yeah. And it, it, the thing is, like, I guess there's been like back and forth of if it was actually a proven thing that happened or not, because there's also like a sex, you know, trade kind of thing with that as well when they would take like girls but uh this was a thing that 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 was something that just exists still like people believe that uh all these sailors would get taken uh from bars when they're like intoxicated and and wake up and find themselves on a boat that was out you know to see one of the number one targets for uh like crime when they kidnap people is are people who are drunk on drugs or already breaking the law because oftentimes the victims are afraid to say anything <laughs> Because of what they were doing when they got kidnapped. Oh yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. So like you, you know, you're, you're high on crack, and then they kid, they're gonna be like, well, what were you doing in the alley at that time? So people are afraid to even say anything, so they become uh, big targets. So it makes sense that they would kidnap someone smashed, yeah, out of their mind. Yeah. And come back, and then, you know, you can tell your wife. What a, what a horrible hangover, right? <laughs> 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 ah, why? Uh, I, yeah. gotta, I gotta work now. Yeah, yeah. Dude, did you hear about uh, GNC? Oh, yeah. 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 Dude, 1,200 locations. So they file, permanent. file bankruptcy. Permanent closing. 1,200 stores gone. Mm-hmm. Permanent. Mm-hmm. Now, here's the shocking part for me. Okay. That, that and, they were still existing. Yes. Yeah. Now, you know, I agree. Like, if you work there, whatever, you know, I apologize, but I don't understand how GNC yeah. was even. How, how, how they even, didn't like leave when Barnes and Noble was no more. So years, yeah. so years ago, um, I, I never really tell the story on the podcast, but years ago. That's a ago, good example though, Justin. Yeah. Cause Barnes and Noble still exists, you yeah. know, they're still around and that's, and you, why? Cause books, you can buy books on Amazon. It's, you know, people still like to go in and touch, feel, pick things up. So they were, it's the supplement industry, even though it's dominated now by Amazon, bodybuilding.coms and stuff like that. People still. Yeah. See, I almost opened one. I almost opened a GMC. Uh, I thought about it. Years, yeah. You do too. Yeah. Right? We had friends that did it too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah so back when I was at 24 Fitness the second time around, then I left. 
I was going to open a GNC. And I mean, 15 to years ago, it'd be a killer business. Well, so I saw the yeah. writing on the wall. So I yeah. was thinking about opening one. I had the business plan all set up and everything. And I was working at the time in, in finance or the bank. And um, I just thought to myself, like, man, I go online and buy supplements and the prices are way better. There's way more variety. GNC kept, uh, they, they, you know how GNC used to have all supplements, but little by little, they wouldn't carry things. And so it was like, unless you're getting vitamins or protein or caffeine, you're not going to find you know, what you're looking for type of deal. Mm -hmm. So I saw the writing on the wall, so I decided not to do it anymore. But they used to, at one point, be very profitable. This is crazy. 1,200 locations yeah. permanently done. I know, you know the whole retail business is just like I. I want to know who even is left because mm. uh, most most stores and our mall just opened back up. It's interesting to see like there's still like a, a Kohl's and there's still like some of these like big huge, uh, you know, retail type places that I'm like, how are they going to be able to survive? I just don't. I don't see it. Mm. Do you guys know that Valley Fair blew out a whole big old uh, section that's brand new? That's got like all kinds of new stores. That's all high, like high end badass stuff. They they added a Shake Shack into the food. What's Shake Shack? That's like the popular Is that from the LA. Okay, LA. It's a LA LA uh, burger joint that's like famous oh, down there. Okay. That's I've like heard, I've heard of it. Yeah. That's like they're in and out of us over here all the time. I was talking about in and out being the best burger place over here. I thought in and out started in LA too. Probably. I don't know where. Oh, okay. I don't know where. It, where did In-N-Out originate from, Doug? Southern California, right? Yeah. Somewhere in California. Actually, Shake Shack is from New York. Oh, it's originally from New York. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, okay. And then, it, so the first place I know of it from over here is L.A. So mm. that's the first time I'd seen one was going down there. And anytime I've been down there and been with somebody that's been one, they're like, oh, my God. I actually haven't. I don't think. I thought. Maybe, I love burgers. I think I eat yeah. there once. I'm a burger connoisseur. I'll try it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I love burgers. Yeah, I'm, you know, I'm yeah. down. I'll try it. That's too. my jam. The nice Chianti, dude. Speaking of uh, uh, twenty, I mentioned twenty four fitness. Remind me, did you guys see those the the my old awards I posted yesterday on my story? Yeah, oh. that was funny, dude. Yeah. So we're cleaning the garage and we're organizing, and I have this uh, bin full of my favorite uh, awards that I got working at twenty four fitness. And yeah. Jessica's always trying to get me to get rid of them. She's like, "Why do you want these? Why do? You, who cares?" <laughs> I'm like, this is... I've, I still got mine in a tub dude, underneath the house. They're memories, dude. Even one of them, I had to work hard to get it because they like I, I felt like I was pissed because there was a whole new regime that came in uh, at that time, and then that was not a thing anymore that you got like awards and trophies. Yeah, and, Justin got fucked a little bit. He didn't get a chance to like really get after yeah, it. I was like, I wanted to go to Hawaii, and then they took that away, and then I'm like, at least give me a fucking trophy. You know, like, give me some acknowledgement. They give you a, a ribbon? So, yeah. <laughs> At that point, I'm like, yeah, give me something. Yeah. You know, no, a I button got or something. My very first award I found in there, which is why I saved it, and it was, I mean, it's you know, 1997. Wow. It's the first month that I was a, a, a trainer. And it's like an old school plaque. Remember the wood plaque with the engraved like metal. Is thing it, the, on it? Is it a circle glass thing? Or no, is it... the circle glass ones I got later. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So back in '97, you would get a wooden. That's before my time. It was like a oh. wooden plaque with a metal thing on it. That's old timey. And it, I mean, it was my first month. My first month as a trainer, they gave me an award, and it said, and they misspelled my last name. Oh, are you serious? Yeah. Uh, they misspelled my last name, so I posted it, and people will make fun of me. And then I found my million uh, million dollar award. I remember you, so you have the ring. Where's cool. it? You, know, uh, you should wear that. That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a Super Bowl ring. Dude. Yeah, so yeah, it's the same thing. Hey, hey, in our company at that time, that was like the Super bro, Bowl ring. Bro. You, if you sold a million dollars. Not a lot of people had done it back then. That's a million dollars in personal revenue. So you sold on your own. Yeah. Now, keep in yeah. mind, I, Kiss did, it. Yeah. I did this in, in a couple of years. So everybody else who had it was had been with the company. That's for why it was. So, no, that's years. why it was such a big deal. Was because yeah. any first of all, not a lot of guys had it, right? No, or girls a small had group, it. Yeah. But it was a small a small group, and most of them that did have it were seven, ten years into the company. Mm -hmm. So if you were rocking that in early, 2000s, I do have the ring though. You do, it's, yeah, but I'm not gonna wear yes, a fucking come on, dude. A cheesy. Oh wow, yeah. what's, that, what's that big ass ring on your <clears> finger for? <throat> <laughs> I sold a million dollars worth of memberships and trading back in the day. <laughs> Did you uh, did you get the, the the Mont Blanc pen too? That was, I got the whole thing. Yeah, yeah you get the whole yeah. setup. Oh uh -huh. man, I have yeah. a watch that uh, like I never wear, like because we went to a bowl game that we totally got destroyed in, you know. And so it's like I could start wearing that, but we lost fucking like bad. Oh, wait, they wait, gave, hold they, on. Wait, they gave watches at for football. You, yeah, if, if you, you make a if you make it into a bowl <laughs> game, you get shit. Like, oh, but if you win, you get a ring. So you, you, know? you had a participation. <laughs> yeah, that's what it was. The partition <laughs> participation. Participation watch. Nobody, that's why I don't wear it. Nobody wants to wear the second wow. place trophy. Never. Oh, no, yeah. Never would yeah. I do that. I don't have any second place bullshit. No. Tear that down. You know what I mean? 
Yeah. <laughs> Justin gets all pissed off. Uh, about a lot of my, I, get mad I actually that. had, so I'm like you, I have a, a, a big tub sal of all the, all the glass. I have glass ones, laminate ones, wood ones that I have in there. And, um, I, quite a few of them broke in one of my moves. I was really bummed about that. Yeah. No, I'm Katrina, never getting rid of those. Katrina man. saw me all, I was all like heartbroken. Over. We should like combine all of our trophies together. Do you know who, so our buddy Larry, who has the most out of all of us. He's he's still fucking. He's into real estate and other things. He and probably has a room. He does. He has an office. And he's got. <laughs> you turn lights on. It's yes, like all no. Like he just post, underlit. I yeah. saw him post it the other day. He's got a you know he's got a big ass case and he's got like all of yeah. his all of his glass. Tra- I mean that fool had more than anybody I know. So, Some heavenly music just turns on <clears throat> as you flip the switch. So Larry, you know Larry's a. I, I hired him right back in the day and he, very talented young man. One of the most likable people I ever meet. Gr- one of the greatest communicators ever. He's just so effective naturally too very very good at, at what he does and there was a record that i held forever it was the 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 world it was the record in the whole company for sales personal sales by a general manager and nobody even came they didn't even get halfway to where i was so this thing stayed there forever and, and i would taunt larry about it <laughs> constantly because he was so good as you do that the only way to really motivate and push him was he you know he's very competitive and so yeah. i did it on purpose and of course. i wanted him to do well because i like i love the guy i love him to death so I would taunt him about it. And man, the day he broke that record, and he broke it by like a couple thousand dollars. Oh, you, he was so happy. Yeah. You know? But he didn't talk he didn't talk any shit. I expected him to talk a lot of shit, but he didn't. Wow. Which made me realize that it was just a, it was a respect thing, you yeah, know, between yeah. the two of us. Yeah, so that's yeah, cool. Yeah, it's a good it's a it's all a good time. That's Dude, funny. you know what I you know what I've been picking up a lot lately that uh that I, I think we need to give some well, we do talk about the value of the trap bar, but I really like the trap bar a lot. Mm-hmm. It's got a lot of value with. Uh, you use it with, the most, I think. Yeah. You know, it's got a ton of value. Heavy R- car- Ripto doesn't agree with you. I know. Yeah. I don't know why he doesn't like it. Yeah. Yeah. Old school guy. It's, it, dude, trap bars by they're used way more by athletic coaches. Mm-hmm. If, you, if you haven't noticed, yeah, yeah. All it the makes, basketball to football. me, it makes the most sense with them for it sure. It does, right? Yeah. But the the heavy farmer walks, and then yesterday I was doing uh, trap bar deadlifts. Um, and you can lift more with a trap bar than you can with a straight bar. And for me, it's usually about a, you know, if I'm looking at my max, it's like a 40 pound uh, difference. But I was doing reps with, I think I had 520 on the bar, and just the my mid back, it's so activated from the trap bar. I really do think it's one of the better devices to now, use. Now, when you go that heavy on trap bar, do you actually feel your quads get sore too? Not sore. They don't no. get sore. No, I don't get sore. I'm like, it's because of the range of motion isn't super low. Yeah, yeah. With it's the trap still bar. heavy weight though that you're doing. I mean, yeah. it's like because it's almost like a little mini squat when you do a kind of right. Yeah. It's like a squat deadlift or whatever. Yeah, I love it, man. Yeah, every now and then I'll feel my QL talk to me a little bit, uh, and I think that's just trying to stabilize because there's a little bit of shift that mm-hmm. happens, and I know that's kind of part of the argument. But uh, I I enjoy them especially for the farmer carries. I think they're fantastic for that. Totally. Yeah. And then what's uh, I, can't, I can't believe you just slipped my name uh dude that uh helped us create power lift uh ben, Paul, ben yeah Pollock? yeah do have you see did you see his trap bar pull oh my god 880 pounds he's he is like turning into an altered beast yeah how like, much how much muscle mass is the guy gained? i don't know how, like can he still gain muscle mass he at this lo- point he looks like he ate his old self yeah that's how much bigger 100 he is now no, i mean he, it's it's uh, he's a savage dude that he, honestly like that's he, he's my go-to page when i'm like trying to get hyped for a heavy lift day dude <laughs> i swear to god are you really yeah because his whole page is that his whole yeah. page is like all of his lifts and they're everything is 800 he's, seven he's, i think he's a, pulling a, weight i'm just light like day confused. is like 670 700 pounds i think is like the light day for him for yeah. reps do you guys have like a most proud moment for yourselves in, in your whole lifting career is there like one moment you could say that you were most proud of chasing that deadlift for uh, me was a big deal really yeah yeah, yeah. I, I think yeah go ahead no i just that was a big deal for me because i never had focused on that i mm-hmm. never like said i'm gonna try and deadlift you know but honestly before i met you guys i was never a real heavy lifter i yeah. i came from the camp of if I, if I can't lift it five or six times, I'm not going to put, I'm not going to put that kind of, I never did doubles, triples. I didn't do any of that. Mm-hmm. Like I just, I never saw value in it uh, for at all. Like it, to me, it was five reps minimum. I mean, and it was rare. I even did five or six. I was normally to eight, 10, 12. Mm-hmm. So to actually see like, okay, where am I at on a single for a deadlift? And then to try and progress that over that like year or so that I was chasing you. Um, that that pulling that 550 felt really good. I mean, mm-hmm. that was a big moment for me. Yeah, yeah. I think um, for me, it was because I was working so hard on power cleans when I was working uh, with coaches through all these different programs, and then I you would test it out, and that was actually it turned into my best lift, where I I got up to like 350 or something like that, 
And it was like a, such a pivotal moment for me because in my weight class and everything, because uh, I was I was like with the linebackers and I was with the guys that were kind of like, you know, on the fringe of with the linemen. And so I started that. That's what kind of pushed me over into working out with all the linemen. And then I also then broke my my bench record uh, at at the school for you know a minute before somebody beat me, but it was with two twenty five. And oh, for reps, yeah, for reps. So that was that was cool. I wonder why they use that as a strength test in in football because isn't that isn't that in the what is that called when they go do the the, the combine? Yeah, mm-hmm. why they do the bench press? Yeah, it's two twenty five for reps. That's like a it's like one of the standard tests. Well, right? think about it. If you're They're like just a, trying to standardize it. Well, not only that, but if you're in, in football, you're blocking people yeah. all the time with that, and that's yeah, it, it's yeah, it's power reps. You yeah, know, you're just trying. And to you might have out. to do it multiple times. It's not like a one time you hit somebody mm-hmm. for a block. You could right. in, a, in a guy running, you could end up blocking three, four people multiple times that same person. Interesting. So. Interesting. Yeah. That so, would be my theory on why that. that I would think so too, but it's you know bench press is although I believe it to be a, a great upper body exercise, definitely one of the best you know developers of the chest and the shoulders and triceps. I don't. It's not super functional in comparison to like even an overhead press. I think an overhead press is going to give you yeah. more carryover to most sports. Agreed. I think it's just because when you're yeah either you're blocking or you're tackling, a lot of it is that initial. Yeah, I would just pop I would disagree right for, here. For football, I would yeah. disagree. I would say football, the bench press is extreme. And I think 225 is, is – think about that. That's probably – that's a good amount of weight. Most people are going to be probably weighing around that, unless you're hitting a lineman, right, who's 300-something pounds. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Most people in football are going to weigh somewhere around that. And if you could move 225 explosively – Now, when you're, when, you're, when you're a lineman in football and you're, you're – Pushing people away. Are you standing upright, no, or actual, are you leaning forward well, like more of an overhead press? Well, no. The actual real angle is an incline press. Mm-hmm. Okay, right. So that's I believe that's the actual. The, yeah, the, the incline press. The incline press came from that, right? Trying to emulate the angle that uh, lineman coming up mm. to block would be. So that that's mm. almost the perfect, you know, exercise for that. I just think like Justin's saying that if you can, that's that that movement, that motion is so. So if you can do that explosively, I think that translates on the field incredibly. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, that, that, that makes some sense. It makes a lot of sense. You know what I've been drinking while I I work out just to see, especially if I do because now you I'm get gonna drunk tr- first. Or? Huh? No, not that kind of drinking. <laughs> yeah, cool. I have beer. Um, although I have done that before. Have you guys ever had alcohol <laughs> while working wor- out? I, I hate working out on alcohol. It's a, <laughs> what do you mean you hate? I hate. How many it. times have you done it? <laughs> every time. <laughs> it's just the worst. Because like, I tried every like, week. This was a bad idea. <laughs> every yeah. time. No, I uh, I started so if I do the afternoon workouts where I have way more energy and I'm going to push it, I'll have a some coconut water because of the the sugars that are in the in the coconut water. It's got some electrolytes in there, so it's good for hydration, especially since it's hot. And then I mix the the Organifi green juice in there, and I've done that now a few times oh, while you're working out. While I'm working out, so intra workout. <laughs> And if you're going to, I mean, and studies do show that if you're going to have a a long kind of arduous workout, that intra workout uh, carbohydrates um, can definitely help with performance. If you're going to do like mm-hmm. a 45 minute hard workout, probably not going. It's it's more about what you just ate. Before. Easy, accessible energy. Yeah. So I'm just sipping on this coconut water. I throw in the green juice. It actually tastes pretty good together. Mm-hmm. And um, I'm, I'm I'm I feel better. It's because I can tell by about 60 minutes. <clears throat> Because my afternoon, if I go, if I go for it, I'm there for 90 minutes. I'm doing a one and a half hour workout. Uh, but it, but when I typically what happens at 60 minutes is I start to feel my energy start to dip right when I get into like shoulders and arms. But if I'm drinking some some carbohydrates and then I put the green juice in there, um, which is I just like the flavor of it. I think about that so if I'm in a phase where I'm doing like 15 reps or more or whatever. Like that's oh my god, I die if I don't have some kind of uh, something on hand that'll give me a little bit of a mm. boost. And so yeah, I totally. It was the red juice though. I would I would use uh, oh. for those days like back in the day. So see, red juice has got rhodiola in it, which is got some yeah and beets which. So that's going to help a lot for a lot of people. Rhodiella is a little bit of a stimulant. And for me, I, mean, I got to be careful with the stimulant uh, mm-hmm. aspect of it. But for some people, rhodiola is like, it's like a replacement for caffeine. Like more stimulants. You know, speaking of uh, Organifi, this is something I didn't even know. It felt so bad. We've been with him for like three years now. I didn't know this. They actually sell like a lot of bundles. Oh, really? Yes. Yeah, so they bundle a lot of their supplements for a discounted price. And then you get our, our discount on top of that. So 
you know, if you're somebody who's been using their products and really like it, and there's, you know, you can you can put together multiple. Of their, and I'm assuming they make sense. So like, yeah, this is right. like the the sleep like a, bundle. Yeah, or sleep bundle. They have like a brain bundle. So they do. They have yeah. They pair them together like that. So speaking of bundles, um, so you know, once once a year we do this huge sale, which is in the summer. We're doing it right now, right? So everything is every program is forty percent off. Then we discount all of our bundles. A lot of our, our which we never do, never we never do because bundles are already discounted. And bundles yeah. are like you know two or more programs uh, combined, and I'm getting messages from people who didn't even know that we had uh, certain bundles. That's because we don't market or we never talk about. No, them. We don't advertise them on the podcast. No, we have a starter bundle, which is great for people getting kind of started with resistance training or getting back into it. We have a, you know, we have a, 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 a uh, over forty bundle, which is good for people who are over forty and, and some of the things that they need mm -hmm. with their training. There's an extreme fitness bundle, which is like hardcore athletic performance. We have a bikini bundle. Mm -hmm. um, it, we have a, a hard gainer bundle. This one I, I put together, um, and it's specifically designed for for people who have a tough time building muscle. Um, people who find that their bodies just don't respond. There's yeah. a lot of these. There's more than just that. Well, and all of, of these, yeah. when you talk about these, these are all like programs that will last you six months plus because they're a minimum of two programs. Some of them bigger. Some of them have three or four programs in it. So a lot of these bundles will last you, you know, enti almost an entire year on some of them. Well, right. and the, we get a lot of questions of like, which ones should you stack together, you know, towards your specific goal. And so this is another way to kind of, you know, look through those and see which programs it's, it's highlighting. And that's, you know, a good way to kind of run through that for uh, those particular interests. I'm glad you brought that up too, because something that Sal did for uh, Rachel probably three or four months ago, and a lot of people don't know this either, is on the saved highlights. So in the Instagram page, Mind Pump Media, there's saved highlight stories of like all the different pathways that you might want to be taking. So building muscle, losing body fat, yes. beginning, start, all that stuff. And uh, Sal's put together like the ideal That's programs right. to follow to follow those goals. Yeah, because it, it, depending on your goal, your experience, um, you know, you want to follow the the most effective path for you. One of the most one of the most uh, effective things you could do for your body in terms of fitness is individualize your program. That's why personal trainers, good personal trainers, are so damn value uh, valuable. There's nothing that'll replace an amazing personal trainer because. The trainer can look just at you and individualize your workout based off of your body. Um, so you want to you want to follow a plan that is more catered to you than one that is more general. Um, and so what we do with these programs is we bundle them based off of like if you're the if you want to do the over forty bundle, right? The, the, the I think they call it the forties the bundle. That's specifically our programs put together for what we would see as trainers that we would often see with clients in that age group. You know, typically mobility issues and need to work on basic compound movement type stuff. And so, you know, we put all. What's the code for the for the bundles, Doug? I think it was a summer, summer bundle. Summer bundle, right? Summer bundle and summer program for the programs. Yeah, because each program is individually forty percent off. So there you go. And I don't know oh, how. Yeah. Is this one going to the end of the month? To I think, the end of the month, and that's it. Yeah, that's it. First question is from Serafina Ross. <clears throat> Should I hire a personal trainer before I hire a nutritionist or does that not matter? I want to focus more on having the right nutrition for the way I'm exercising since I know less about nutrition. Oh, that's an interesting question. You know what? Um, as I think about it, I think the best order, and now this is going to be different from person to person, so this may not apply to everybody that I'm talking to, but I think generally speaking, you want to start with your trainer before you start nutritionist, and here's why. When I used to train clients... Um, I wouldn't really get down uh, to the nitty gritty with the nutrition till later because working out is easier than diet. Like it's easy. It was easy for me to get someone to show up and train with me a couple days a week. It's really hard to work on nutrition. That's a very, that's a, such a much more it's complex. It's way more ingrained in, in your everyday process. And it's exactly, it's every day, okay. all day. And so typically what I would do with the average client is they would start working out with me. And let's say we start working out twice a week, and then they'd ask me, what about nutrition? What can I do with nutrition? Now, in the early days, before I knew any better, I would give them everything. Oh, here's your meal plan. This is what you're going to eat for breakfast, lunch, dinner. Here's your calories, proteins, fats, carbs. Don't eat that. Eat this. And it just failed because it was too much. 
later on what I did was people would ask me, you know, after I start training them, well, what about nutrition? And then I would make one small change. You know, mm -hmm. I'd say, okay, let's look at your, your diet. And I'd say, okay, here's what I want you to do. How do you feel about adding one serving of vegetables a day? Let's just start with that. And it was just a, it's just a slower process for permanent change with nutrition than it is with, with exercise. That's interesting. This is an area where we're different than how we coach because I actually, and it, this didn't happen until later in my career. Early on, I, I was just like you in that. Uh, I, and I think that a lot of that had to do with I just wasn't confident in, in my nutrition knowledge to be able to really help someone. So I would just you know print off the meal plan, hand it to yeah. them type of deal. But later, as I got uh, more experience, I realized how important the nutrition was in, to the results of this this client would have. Like, I knew if I programmed right and I trained them good, I could get anybody if they, especially if they weren't training properly, to see some results. But I realized quickly that boy, if I got them to dial their nutrition in uh, with that, the results were unbelievable. And it's like I could show them a lot in a short amount of time if I was able to really dial the nutrition. So I actually would get to I got to a point where. I wouldn't. Uh, I wouldn't take you as a client until you had done your due diligence of tracking your food and stuff. So if you came to me and said, "Hey, we want to pay you to train me this and that," I'd say, "Okay, before we even train, I want you to do this, this, and this." Like you need to start tracking. You need to do the. You need to look at all these things. You need to bring that to me. Then I'll start you off, and we'll start training. And then I could. Then I would do what you said. Subtle things, right? So I would start to add things into their diet, but I would make, and, and what it did was <clears throat> it, it weeded out all the, the people that were too lazy to even do that. And I knew that if they were, if they were too lazy to even track what they were doing, I'm not even telling you you had to eat a certain way. I'm just saying track what you're doing. Uh, and I, then I knew they were going to be lazy about everything else I taught them if they couldn't do that. If I, you, before you spent any money on me, you couldn't, and you were about to invest in me. If you didn't take the time to track food for a week or two to present that to me, then I knew that you weren't going to be a good client anyways. And I knew the things that I would try and teach you would be off. But to this person's question, I mean, this is what's kind of cool about, uh, I mean, the work and effort that we've put into designing really good programs is. I would hire a nutritionist and start a MAPS program. I mean, and then eventually, if uh, if you want, hire a personal trainer to really dive even deeper into your programming and maybe customize it even more towards you. But I mean, we got the programming that we've put so much time and effort into. Um, I think you could pair that with a great nutritionist and see phenomenal results right out the gate. That would be my suggestion. Yeah, I was a little more like, I totally agree and, and you know, understand where you're coming from with that in terms of the priorities of understanding like where you're at, especially the tracking part so you can bring that information in and then we can have that to refer to i think that's a, a huge part of it so i would i would highlight that with my clients and like at least i want to know like your patterns uh, we wouldn't necessarily change anything right away uh i would i would then at least be able to know okay i this is probably what she's eating. This is probably what uh, I'm working with right now. But I want to get her up and running and and get these uh, you know workouts established. And the priorities for me was always around uh, movement and and function and and alleviating pain. You know, while they wanted to uh, get leaner and and show off, you know, more of a, a, a lean tone physique. Um, but I mean, th that was like my typical client. Uh, but definitely, like getting. The, the workouts established and, and uh, being able to address all those things was just uh, something that is hmm. obviously it could have been more my wheelhouse because like nutrition came a little bit, a bit later for me. But, uh, you know, something that I still to this day, I'll I'll just slowly integrate um, nutrition advice. And then, uh, you know, that way we can just work on one thing at a time because it is so ingrained in their everyday process. You know where this really started for me was uh, with my family. So I remember getting so, and I'm sure you guys remember, had this. Like I used to get so frustrated. Well, family is just the category of people that are just they're, yeah. They're typically like, oh, I want help, and you really don't. Yeah, they exactly. Right, yeah. And so this is a, it. Feels good for them to say that. It started this way because of family. Like so, it was I didn't piece this together off of clients until I started to do it with family, and then I was like, oh shit, I should really apply this to clients. And that was, you know, obviously you've been doing this as long as we have. Uh, in in your your family starts coming to you like crazy that, you know, hey, would you help me with my diet or help me with my pro? And at the, at the beginning, especially early on as a trainer, like I want to help all of them. 
And then you get kind of frustrated. You're like, you sit, I sit down, I write everything all out for them. And then like they fucking do it for a week and then they're done or they half ass it. And it'd just be like, oh, that's great. I sat down for hours to try and help my family member out. And then they didn't really, they just want it. They wanted the quick fixes just like everybody else does. Right. So I quickly learned that, you know what? I'm not going to tell my family no. Like that's a dick move to tell my family I won't help them, but I'm going to put more responsibility on them to mm -hmm. show me and sell them on why it's important they do all that before I could can even help them. And so I began telling them, well, okay, I'll help you. What I need though from you first is you to do this, this, and this. And I would give them like those things for them to go do and then to present to me. And then you know what ends up happening? 90% of yeah. them <laughs> never come back with this thing to present to me because they weren't even ready to do that. Yeah, yeah, the way I look at it too is just the, the the psychology behind it all. Like I know when the client shows up to train with me, I'm there. Like I'm there for the workout. I'm not there for your eating. I'm not always going to be there for right. your nutrition. And so for me, it's just, let's start with the easier stuff and then move and, and slowly tackle the more difficult stuff. And the easier stuff is to show up to work out with me twice a week. That's easy compared to nutrition, yeah. which can be very, very difficult. So that's just where I would start. And then it would be a slow process. And the conversation was, here's all the stuff that you're going to have to do eventually, but don't worry there's a process to get there, and and we're going to work through that process. And it might take a while, but when we do get there, uh, it's going to be permanent. I've also worked with nutritionists, and those are hit or miss. Yeah, I'm not oh. going to lie. Yeah, let's talk about that. Like it's so many with really, really old information uh, <laughs> that I'm just like appalled that they still teach in school. Oh, <laughs> referring I, to like the food pyramid. Oh and my shit. god, <laughs> no, I, I worked. With, I worked with nutritionists that took zero of the client psychology into. Uh, they literally did what I used to do, which was make meal plans. And I couldn't believe that this was somebody that you know you, you would pay to hire. Who this was their specialty. Yeah. Um, I've also worked nutritionists who are really good. Um, as long as they work with the trainer, I think that, that you know that's the best thing to do. But if you had to pick between a personal trainer and a nutritionist, and you're thinking I have limited resources, I can only hire one or the other. Um, I think a good personal trainer is probably going to bring you more value than a good nutritionist initially. Not saying that you won't work with one later on. But initially, start with the easier commitment, uh, the the smaller first step. Which, believe it or not, working out is a smaller first step than, than fixing your diet. Next question is from Healthy Mama, Happy Mama. What are your best tips for motivating clients to keep moving after the initial excitement of a new program? Mm. Pre prepare for this as a trainer. This will happen with every yeah. single client. Um, you have to mm -hmm. really get in the mindset. And I used to, the way I used to do uh, work around this as an early trainer was to keep making it exciting. Mm -hmm. Like every time they come in, I'm well, like, it's going to be fun. Think about this. This is actually, I love this question because uh, it allows us to kind of dive into like the, um, the concepts that we've built into maps. Like, and this was discussed, right? Like, uh, and we get this sometimes from other like uh, high level coaches or people that really understand programming. Like, why, why do you guys make phases only like three to four weeks long? Because they technically they could be doing that phase for like six weeks. Mm -hmm. And you're right. But we also factor in the, exactly what this question is alluding to. And we've learned that, you know, we want to hit like the peak amount of for adaptation. And we know in that three to six week mark is kind of a, the ideal place before you phase out of, of a phase. But we also know that the psychology part of clients get really you know, bored really fast. And so if I can switch them to a new phase of different exercises, different rep ranges, mm -hmm. right? Different rest periods. If I can manipulate their programming as faster, it keeps them excited about doing something different. So they never really have to be doing the same thing for longer than about three or four weeks. That was factored into the idea of us when we when we came up with things right, like this. Right, right. Now, now, also think of the, the mindset around a motivated client and then one that's just normal, right? Average or whatever. Motivated client is going to want to push harder. They're going to want to have better workouts. They're going to like to sweat. They're going to want to feel what the workout feels like and feel like, oh, man, I hit PRs or, wow, this is great. The normal client isn't necessarily going to have the same energy and gusto for that. But the normal client, what do they typically deal with? Pain, mm -hmm. stress. Uh, maybe they're feeling fatigued. So that's the value that you provide to your client that tends to keep them doing this long term. Like, Yes, getting them results and burning body fat and all that stuff is great, but if you can show a client that I'll, – I'll, let me put it this way. If you're a trainer and your client calls you and says, man, I'm really tired and my shoulders kind of hurt. I need to cancel my appointment with you. 
that means you're doing the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. You want your client to call you and say, hey, you know, hey, Justin, uh, I know we're not scheduled today, but I'm really tired. My shoulder kind of hurts. Can I come see you? Yeah. That's where you provide the long-term value. That's how you keep them coming is by showing them all the value, not just the exciting, you know, motivation part. Well, this is like when we were talking about assessments and that it doesn't stop. Like I would literally assess every client the moment they would come in and we would find out where they were for that day specifically because it changes all the time. Their energy levels change. Like they have aches and pains like you're, you're mentioning. Uh, you, you know, they, they might have extra stress from, from work or, you know, whatever. I want to know what I'm working with for that day. And I'm going to completely alter and tailor the workout to, uh, you know, be something that's a, a little more of a better fit, uh, for that individual for that specific day. And so, but I have a, I have a definitely have a foundational plan that I'm trying to accomplish. And that's, you know, the, the big piece of like getting them towards their goal, but, uh, that was something that I was always checking uh, and, and having them talk to me, give me feedback uh, and, and seeing if what, what I'm trying to do with them applies and is, is, is a good uh, you know method for that day. So uh, I think a good trainer will start to kind of realize every day, you know, check ins are, are important. Uh, and, and it's also uh, about the conversation. It's about, you know, the entertainment. You got to be a personality. I mean, and this is why, you know, I don't think there's a lot of people that are meant to be trainers, but the ones that can have, you know, good conversations and, and be likable and whatnot with their clients are going to have the best retention. Yeah. Well, I really like what Sal's saying too about like, you know, the teaching them about other things too, because there's always something that a client, whether it be nutrition, uh, aches and pains they're dealing with, or just flat out programming. And one of the ways to keep them motivated is constantly be teaching them something else. So I, and that is another reason too, why I actually love to move clients in and out of different diets mm -hmm. and give, and, and I would give them like, I would forecast, you know, Hey, for the next two to three weeks, this is what we're going to focus on. You know, we're going to be doing these things. This is what we're looking for. This is what I want your feedback to tell me how you're feeling about this, what you notice. And then, you know, I transition to the next thing. Having uh, constantly forecasting as a trainer is something that will really help you keep your clients motivated versus the early trainer of, in me, you know, would just... I'd be, I, my workouts were planned literally the morning of them coming in to see me and it was, I would change it the day to day and I wouldn't really have this long-term plan. But if I have a plan and I can, and I can communicate that to them, it's a lot easier for them to stay focused because they know like, oh, I've got this for the next week or two, stay focused on that. Then my coach is going to train, change the plan for me. And so that's one of the ways to help keep them motivated than, than just like, on the fly, changing up things. And if you're teaching them things about mobility and how to how to combat uh, joint pain, that's cool. If you're teaching them nutrition stuff, different types of diets and benefits of eating certain way, fasting, all these all these tools. These are all tools in your tool belt as a trainer, and you use the using them constantly to help them. It'll build value in you. It'll keep them motivated because you're teaching them new things, and then it'll lead to like what Sal is saying, where you know, man, they really think of you as like their health expert. And that yet anytime something feels off, you know, with them, everything from energy levels to achiness in the in their body to unmotivated, they're gonna reach to you and come come to you versus, you know, oh, I'm not gonna see my trainer today because I'm not feeling yeah, it. Yeah, and and sometimes as a trainer, you 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 the client will even tell you what they think they need, but you know what it's something else. And you don't need to necessarily tell them that they're wrong. You just guide them. And I, I remember one story in particular. I had a client, Jennifer, who uh, you know, she had young kids and, you know, a lot of, you know, she was stressed out at work. Or she, I mean, she shows up to the session. I could tell something was wrong because she just walked by me to go change or whatever, comes out of the locker room. And uh, I'm like, hey, how's it going? How you feeling? She's like, oh, terrible. I, you know, you know, so my, my kid didn't sleep good last night and then work was really stressful. And then because I was so stressed for lunch, I ate McDonald's and I had all this stuff and then I ate a bunch of cookies. And she's like, I just want you to kick my ass. I need to get my ass kicked so I can just burn off these calories. That's what she said she wanted. But I knew what she needed was really to get rid of some some stress and to take care of herself a little differently. So I said, no problem. We'll take care of you. So what did I do? I did some stretching with her. I had her do some belly breathing. We did some slow focused movement and the, the shift in her and the change in how she felt afterwards and the, the conversations were uplifting um, and were empowering. And she left and she was totally different. She ended up becoming a very, very long-term client. Now, had I beat the crap out of her like she had asked me to, uh, I don't think that would have worked nearly as well. I don't think she would have really felt the genuine 
value that fitness can provide because it would have been applied the wrong way. Next question is from Ryan W. Richards. What's your opinion on the Sun's relationship to wellness? We are told to stay out of it, but there's increasing research showing the benefits of sunshine for our overall health. What are your thoughts on the validity of the competing research? Okay, so I'll tell you a story that'll kind of tell you, that'll that'll illustrate the misinformation or I think miscommunication we've gotten in regards to the sun. So if you were to hook somebody up to a bunch of machinery that would test things like free radical production, uh, inflammatory markers, stress hormones, like all the stuff that typically, you know, if you see them rise, uh oh, this isn't a good thing. Working and, out would look bad. And yeah, you hook someone yeah. up and you train them, um, it would it would look very bad, especially if you train them too hard. If I take the wrong if I take a person and I train them in, inappropriately and train them too hard, I guarantee we're gonna see oh, especially over time, damage to their heart. Uh, poor joint health is going to suffer. You might even see hormonal imbalances and lots of health issues. And so the, the the headline could read, workouts cause lots of problems, don't do them. So this is what's happened with the sun. When you get a sunburn or you get sun damage, yeah, that's not good for you. But does that mean not you shouldn't go out in the sun? No, it's, just, it's the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my life. We humans evolved just like everything else on earth, except for things that live at the bottom of the ocean uh, or in caves, with the sun, we literally need sunshine, not just for physiological benefits, but for psychological benefits. You know how many studies there are that show that if you're feeling down or anxious, if you just go out and get some sun, well, talk about that changes. Talk about mm -hmm. what we did la yesterday. Yeah. I mean, oh, yeah. Uh, this is uh, this is a, a conversation off air that we have uh, uh, quite frequently. I mean, I think uh, the one drawback of this, you know, this new profession that we have, you know, relatively new in the last five years. Uh, the, the biggest drawback that we all agree on is is the lack of sun exposure that we get and outside just getting fresh air getting the sun we get we're locked in this little you know cave when we got fluorescent lights on us we have no windows in it and we could get stuck in here for hours on hours all day long and you could tell you can feel the mood totally mm -hmm. you can feel our energy levels start to sink that's why we actually back in the days we used to record sometimes three three four podcasts in a single day. And one of the reasons why we got away from doing that was because we could feel our energy and our mood change by episode two or three that we'd record because we, we were just stuck under these fluorescent lines. And it's just, and I can tell an immediate difference when we just go out like we did yesterday. Everybody was kind of feeling lethargic, tired. We were in a bad mood. We we're handling bullshit. And we all said, you know what, let's just get up and go for a 20-minute walk outside in the sun. And we all did that and come back completely re-energized. Um, I, I guess when I was younger, I just didn't really pay attention to these things. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't know if it's part of getting older and how much I depend on it now more and it's more necessary than when I was younger or I was just oblivious to it or maybe I was just getting a lot more sun. Mm -hmm. But it's a big game changer for me today. I mean, I, I do. I do things. We were just back when we were back up in Tahoe like a, lot, a week or two ago. You know, I, I wasn't feeling good. Uh, remember, I was really down. Yeah. I was like really exhausted. And I went and laid out uh, in the sun and just d took everything off, put a little pair of shorts on and just let the sun, just soak up the sun for a few hours because I feel like I've been neglecting it. So, and I feel immediate difference from doing that. So I think that, uh, and I think it's, uh, I think this is an area that it's a reason why a company like I think Juve is on exploding and on the rise uh, because you do get some of the benefits from the infrared like that that you get from the sun. And I think so many people today, especially in the Silicon Valley, are under these fluorescent lights in closed buildings all day long. We weren't meant to be locked into rooms without sunlight. This is how we evolved. Mm. And there's an individual variance, of course. Yeah. You know, if you're pale, too much sun is not that much for somebody who's dark, and too much sun can cause sun damage. But you know what the the the, the side effect of telling everybody the sun's bad for you has happened? Cancer rates have gone up in some places because people are so afraid of the sun, and they're constantly putting on sunscreens with these chemicals that are, yeah. you know, uh, that mess with your that actually uh, are almost hormone uh, hormone like in the way that they can behave in the body. And you see skin cancer rates go down a little bit, and all other cancer rates go up. You need sunlight. Yeah, and this is something I'm conscious of, obviously. <laughs> I'm a ghost <laughs> over here, uh, and my kids are ghosts. But uh, at the same time, uh, there's, there's, you know when you're going to be in, in a more intense sun exposure kind of situation. And so uh, there's actually a lot more tech 
like type of shirts that actually like uh, prevent you from getting too much UV uh, that you can wear and you can go swimming in. And it's a way better alternative than all these like chemicals and, and greasy, you know, like uh, uh, sunblocks that you're trying to put on constantly. Uh, so, you know, that's something that we'll, we'll use that. We'll wear hats or whatever. If we're like in like super intense sun uh, exposure for too long, but for the most part, I'm trying to get as much sun as I can and then backing out and then coming in. And it's, you just got to kind of find your own tolerance to it. Well, I'm glad Sal brought up the individual variants. Cause I mean, I mean, I think there's a lot to do with like epigenetics and stuff like that with this. And you take somebody like your family history that mm. goes back to like the Mediterranean and stuff like that. You, I would think you need it even more than Justin. Needs I do. It. I think I need it more than Justin. Darker either. skin people yeah. synthesize less vitamin D uh, from sun exposure. Yeah. It, it, we need more sun exposure to get the same effects as somebody who's who's right. light skinned. Um, so there's just like there's an individual variance for workouts or anything else. Yeah, we but, just covered this in an episode right. talking about that. This goes in this category right here, and this could like what we're talking about right now could be an absolute game changer for you. You could be somebody that has evolved to be someone who needs a lot more sun than your friend. Mm -hmm. yeah. You might have a Justin friend who doesn't need that much sun. You can only be so lucky. <laughs> you, know <what> I mean? <laughs> you know, and if you have a friend like that, he he doesn't need but maybe 10, 15 minutes a day of that where I feel like I need at least like a half hour to an hour of like good sun exposure every day to feel really good. And I notice a huge difference when I'm going after it and when I'm not. Everybody needs a Casper. Next question is from one Koner. How do you deal with someone who is very harsh on themselves? My friend has an amazing physique, especially for a teenager, yet he is constantly comparing himself to others. Lots of times they don't even look as good as him, but he is still jealous and not happy with himself. Yeah, this is, you know, when you identify so strongly with your body, you're ne this is where you're always going to be. You will never be yeah, out gonna of- going to fall short constantly. You will never be happy um, when you identify strongly with your body. And it's look, even if you, you can be fit, ripped, uh, look perfect, at some point, if you're lucky, you're going to get older uh, and you, you're going to get old and your body's going to change. And if you identify so strongly with your body- uh, that's going to be a very scary time for you. You end up this, being like all these celebrities. That's yeah, with the plastic surgery after plastic surgery and hormones, and they just because they identified so much with with how they look. Um, you know, your body can definitely reflect your health, so it's also important to pay attention to that. But if you identify so strongly with your body that you just you're unhappy all the time, there, there's there's no way out of that. You're always going to be unhappy. And this is look, it's funny. You'll you'll how many times have you guys had a client or a friend where they're just so critical of their bodies? Oh my god, it looks so terrible. And you're at the beach, and maybe someone takes a picture, and then 15 years later, old pictures surface, and they're like, "Wow, man, look how fit I used to be." And I and you look at them and you go, "Do you remember what you used to say back then? Yeah, mm -hmm. you used to think that you looked terrible. Now you're looking back and you're wishing you could look like that again. It's all." It's all your own perception. Um, so, you know, how can you help them? Well, um, the first thing I would say is take his take his uh, his focus off of the way he looks. The most effective, that's step one. The most effective way I've ever found this with a client is to change it from looks to performance. Right. Yeah, not that the, that you want to stay on performance because if you identify with that too much, you can have problems too. But it's an easy it's an easier switch. So I'd say, okay, this person is you know whether it's the girl who is never skinny enough or the you know, the guy who doesn't have enough muscle, I would say, okay, we're going to, don't weigh yourself. Don't look in the mirror. We're going to see how strong we can get you. And it would just shift their, their perspective just long enough to where then we can talk about this a little bit, but I'd have to move them to performance. It's real, it's real easy for a bunch of old guys like us to sit here and say this, but I'll tell you something right now. Like, man, you're a teenager. You're a ball of fucking insecurities, oh, yeah. you know? And I was too, like, yeah. and I don't know, I don't even know if, you know, old Adam could come back and talk to 17 year old Adam and say, Hey bro, yeah. stop worrying about how skinny yeah. you are. You know, I don't know because you, at that age, we all do, we all do at all ages, but at that age in particular, you are just loaded full of all these insecurities and you're trying to figure that out. It's tough to try you to try and tell someone, someone else. You can't do it well, head on because they won't believe you. I didn't when yeah. I was a teenager. If someone told me, no, you look fine, man. I'd be like, he's just saying that because you're nice. Well, this you know? guy already is way nicer than I would have been at his age. Mm. Yeah. Oh, you mean on himself? <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. If my friend was like all neurotic about that, I just would have 
probably made fun of him. You know? <laughs> wow. And then he would have made fun of me. It's, it was like this back and forth thing. <laughs> so I don't know, man. You're already, you're which, already winning which, by, which by just, caring about your friend. Right, right. This is what I'm just saying. exaggerate his insecurity even more, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I was that Thanks, guy. friend. Yeah. But it's like, I don't know, man. I, I That was a hard thing for me that I actually had to now, I, I realize, like, uh, I should probably be nicer yeah. uh, to my friends. He's looking in the mirror and he's like, oh, man, I don't look good. I'm skinny. Yeah, you uh, look like shit, I'm, bro. I look like, yeah, you're right. He's like, All I look, that, I look right. like shit. Yeah. And whatever. And Justin goes, hey, buddy, puts his arm around him. Hey, yeah. man, yeah. you got to look at the bright side. And he's like, well, what's that? Your face Justin. is a train wreck. And he's like, yeah. you know, you got good eyesight. You, yeah. obviously, <laughs> you, can, you obviously can tell. <laughs> you can ob- your, your perception is accurate. Yeah. <laughs> you know, look at the bright side. Right? You, know? you just got to shake him out of it. Yeah, you know, that's, yeah. that's a good point, though, Justin. I mean, yeah. you're already a good friend because you care, right? Yeah. You're already, yeah. you're already I'm a, like, I don't give a shit. Yeah. You're, right. you're already a better friend because uh, I would I would have a bunch, so many insecurities myself that you would push well, him. I know what I know what would have helped me as a teenager, and there's no way you could have talked me out of it, but I think if you did it kind of sneakily by changing my I swear to God if I had if I was training me as a teenager I know exactly what I do I wouldn't be like you're not skinny you're not whatever never would have worked I would have been like hey listen let's 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 worry about something else let's see how strong you can get just change the change the focus a little bit on performance just long enough to where the person's not thinking so much about how they look they're thinking more about how they perform then you might be able to start making some some headway but if you don't change that focus there ain't nothing you can do Doug is uh, is sneakily another Schaeferism I don't know. It sneakily. might be real. <laughs> so, sne- it, sneakily, feel, it feels like a real word. Sneakily, is, I, I feel like all the ones I say I are real words too. <laughs> yeah, we have a new uh, Webster. Well, let's see if Doug just looked it up. Yeah, it's an adverb. Oh, God, yes. look at it. Almost hey, a hey, job. Hey. I, I thought I got you. You almost, you almost got electronic, dude. <laughs> I, yeah. We're all, hey, listen. We're only what twelve hundred episodes. You'll get me. You'll get me. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, look. Uh, Mind Pump is recorded on video as well as audio. Uh, if you want to watch the podcast, you can check us out on YouTube, Mind Pump Podcast, where you want to check us out. Also, uh, if you want to learn more information about fitness, about fat burning and muscle building and just improving your performance, go to mindpumpfree.com. We've got a ton of guides there that can help you out. And finally, if you want to find us on social media, you want to contact us individually, you can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin on Instagram. You can find me at Mind Pump Sal also on Instagram. And Adam, he's at Mind Pump Adam. Also on Instagram.